Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, all the background information there. And um, hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to Addressing Project Change Without Pain. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. Throughout the session, I'm going to present diagrams and models from my two books that I mentioned before um, that can be used on any project throughout the life cycle of the, of the system. So in particular, I'm going to focus on a set of processes that are complementary between um, the project management and the systems engineering disciplines. If you are unfamiliar with either of the disciplines, um, that's not going to be a significant hindrance to understanding the methods that will be presented here. So I hope you find the materials that are presented to be helpful to you. And so during, um, during this seminar, this webinar, I will present um, this integrated approach to lifecycle management of a system. And then we're going to explore the topic of project volatility or the level of expected change within the project throughout its life cycle. We're also going to review techniques used to establish trajectories and baselines, which will be used to measure change. And then uh, a, dis a discussion of the measurements that can be applied is discussed after that. Governance activities um, are those activities which are used to manage change effectively. And we're going to review the most common activities that can effectively manage change. And then finally in this session, strategies that will help ensure successful change management during the execution of the project will be discussed. So let's start now with a focus on the project life cycle. A life cycle is an end-to-end -end look or systemic view of how an activity evolves over time. It can be used to facilitate uh, decisions on when to invest in new technology that will either replace or rejuvenate that existing capability. And it has phases that provide structure and focus. So I have two diagrams here on the slide. The diagram on the left demonstrates a strategic plan and initiatives feeding into a portfolio of activities. And within that portfolio, this particular one, as it's described here, there's a program, a project, some strategic R&D activities. In this particular example, the program also help, has elements of a project to incrementally improve operations processes and uh, an upgrade project that's utilizing both traditional and agile project management, and some R&D um, inclusive of basic research and spiral development. So from this perspective, I'm demonstrating the life cycle as a cumulation, um, cumulative view of all activities from the earliest research and development to a later phase um, operations upgrades. So the right side diagram provides a model to assess where a project might fall and the technical challenge and expected performance timeframes that would likely be affected. So for example, a project with significant technical challenges with an expected longer performance timeframe would likely include elements that departed from existing capability and were inclusive of research and development. Having a background on the structure surrounding the activity and a perspective on what is driving the initiatives and what outcomes are uh, designed from the activity will help provide the context for project structure, which we're going to talk about later. So, um, so I want to point out emphatically that change is not something to be avoided uh, in a project. It's a natural byproduct of evolution. So change is going to occur in any project and in every project that you do. What we want to talk about here is the objective to anticipate the level of change and to plan accordingly so that you can be adaptive and, and be methodical about it so that you're not surprised by change, but that you can plan for the change. Uh, the earlier in the life cycle phase that a project is in, the more change you're going to be able to, you know, you're going to expect from that um, activity, and the more change should be accommodated. So rigor is, you're, you're not going to want um, the same level of rigor in an earlier project that you would as that project proceeds through its life cycle. So now, um, the later in the life cycle, the less change should be anticipated or expected. But the change will occur. The question is, can you manage that change so that you can minimize the impact to cost and schedule, which is, is really going to be important because it takes more money and time later in the life cycle to resolve issues. So you want to resolve those issues as early as you can. 
So the next thing um, I want to show you is this continuum of a project lifecycle. I've got three different models here. Um, regardless of where a project falls within its life cycle, an appropriately applied level of rigor and discipline really should be applied so that there's always a good sense of what, what is being done and how risks and stakeholders are being managed, as well as what the boundaries are in terms of schedule and budget. The only time that's not true is when you have unlimited funds and unlimited time, which, um, you, you know, if you have that, um, you're unique, I think, because most of us have, are bound by the amount of money that we have and the amount of time that we have to do our projects. So on this slide, I show three models that can assist you in determining the place of your project within its life cycle. So cr proper assessment of where a project falls um, as a whole and then its component parts of that is going to be really important. On the top left, we'll start in the top left model, the life cycle flows from basic re research through to closure, so um, going from the bottom of that to the top. In the middle of the box is a progression from imagination where one is trying to understand the realm of the possible in the basic research area to art where one is creating, to craft where one is building, and then on through production where the final product becomes operational and then eventually retired. So there's, a, there's one way to look at the continuum of a project life cycle. Um, if you look at the right box, uh, the right top of the slide in that box, this model focuses on additional considerations to help determine how early or late in the research and development process the project falls. So the model looks at approach, techniques, theory, simulations, prototyping, testing, et cetera, and it gives you a, a continuum from early development to late development. So for example, when you see approach, early development might have a very undefined um, approach where late development would have an established approach. Same with the, the theory. Uh, you could have an unclear theory or questions that you're trying to pose in early development, but the, by the time you're in late development, you, you should have a clear direction or what we're going to call a trajectory, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So you can walk through these if you're thinking about where does my project fit and, and kind of get a better sense on how, where you are in the early to late development, research and development um, spectrum. On the bottom um, are different renditions of a life cycle where project falls in different categories within research and development where you have the basic research, applied research, early development and late development. And, and you can look at the levels of, of control uh, that we're going to talk about shortly, which will be based on where your project falls within this continuum. So I want to I want to just reiterate, you know, we're not looking at. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maludis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.